Biarritz against Munster, champion French club against the Irish province, Munster. Second half now, Stuart Barnes and Miles Harrison. As Munster start this 40 minutes. 40 minutes away. Yashvili. Wait, wait. They've calm at half back. Those two, Peridon and Yashvili. Dowling. Stringer arrives. That's on, that's on. And serves. John Kelly. Again, just stepping back inside the first cover. Munster have done that very well. They have really attacked close. Interesting tactic here as Ogora puts one up very early on. And Gore comes in. Munster had that right at the fore of their mind. I wonder if Declan Kidney told them to do that. In the first minute of the second half. Let's try this time with the defensive kick. That's Munster try and lay siege. Sean Payne after his own kick, and there might be a bit of confusion here. Tion eventually commands the position, but it leads to a penalty. And this one is so kickable, and with the lead now seven points, I think we know where this one's going to go. This is not going into the corner. It might, but I'll be pretty amazed. That would be taking bravery to the point of madness. Two very good high balls and very nervous. The decision to go for goal, by the way, has been confirmed, which would have amazed about 75,000 people if it had been anything else. But you saw Nicola Brusque losing Ogara's very good high ball. Gobele cleared that one. And then Tion and Try couldn't work it out. Of course, it's very noisy, and with this monster crowd urging their team on like bay and hounds, you just don't hear. Now there's a bit of silence, though. Not Tobon Park, but it'll feel like it for Ogara. Of course, there's no wind in here with the roof on, but there is an awful lot of noise. And there will be here if Ogara gets these. <laughs> Ronan Ogara stretches the lead to ten points. And in finals... That starts to become significant, doesn't it? Well, Monster really will be delighted to have more than the one score clear because at some stage, Biarritz will have to even more go away from their traditional game of power and control. And what Monster want more than anything is Biarritz taking risks in their own half. That's the Monster game. They now have their first run on the ladder. A concentration there from Foley. Gobelet took him, but Foley made sure on the catch. Ashvili, very long, Damien Try. Swiveling out of the tackles, but John Hayes has got him in. Who's there again? Foley. Big roar goes up for the combination tackle oh, no, no, and the arrival it. of the captain. Now the applause from O'Connell. And I think he's going to drag his man up off the floor. Yes, he is. The two men. O'Connell, democratic, says thank you to both. Uh, John Hayes, two finals, two defeats. Anthony Foley, the captain, two finals, two defeats. Damien Try, one of the best centres in Europe. And the two old pros say, oh, no, you don't. John Hayes first, and then Captain Foley and Donica O'Callaghan, as so often, not playing Hamlet, but he's an attendant who is putting on a marvellous play today again. since the Sale quarter-final, who's off in that match for 16 minutes and missed the semi-final. So after 16 minutes, then missed the semi-final against Bath. But he's not leaving this ground. Not to be carried off. Absolutely vital to be He's a gentleman warrior, really decent bloke, but so committed to his team would be a massive blow if he was to go. Stringer acts as the fly half there, just running away from the base of the scrum. 
Nikola Brusk. Good response from Ronan O'Gara. He covered the space very well. Well, the way things are going now, if, if Munster can keep this 10-point lead for another 15 minutes, it'll be Dia Ritz who will start to feel their legs going towards the end of this season, and Munster will be pumped with adrenaline. Olivier Olibo has come on for Biritz. There he is, joining the line-out. Davi Kuzene takes his lead. We've got a ground staff stop because of turf being lifted up. Of course, it's always been a problem here, hasn't it? And there's our Premiership playoff tomorrow. Leeds v Watford, but I couldn't be thinking about anything else other than the next 35 minutes. Players of Watford and Leeds might be looking at those pictures and uh, thinking about the surface, but no, this today is rugby's day. Rugby's big showpiece in the Northern Hemisphere at club or provincial level. Heineken Cup final, the one they all want. And we're closing in. And who is going to take the crown this year? Betson, little flick back on the floor there with the boot. Here's Bruce. Connell makes another important tackle. Mimi was there as well. Number four, back foot. The referee just checking the offside and warning. Now Yashvili, a little bit like Stringer, goes for that blind side. Now Stringer has to make the tackle as opposed to make the run. Bombo. Flannery's involved. Anything? Anything? Bit of Astors, maybe. Finance. Finance. No, no, he's there. He's there. Finance. Other side of the pitch from where we are, but that is going to hurt. Yashvili trying to do a little string of the up and over ball. And now Goose taken down. There's a knock on first of all. And Yashvili goes in with his head. Where Flannery wish it hadn't been. I don't think there's any intent. I think he's trying to ruffle him. And there's no doubt it would have hurt. This is not... Uh, you don't say Shylock. <laughs> no, no play active at all, this from Flannery. Heads up, Spurs. There's going to be some pain for both teams in the next 35 minutes. It's not just a high-quality game of rugby, it's relentlessly physical, isn't it? And Flannery has done well to get himself in a position to be able to throw this ball. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You stay there. I'll take your word for it. Taken by O'Callaghan. Far less Paul O'Connell in the line out. O'Callaghan's had a lot of ball to deal with. O'Gara's kick. Just watching the midfield there at Munster. They were in fact in front of the kicker, but O'Gara only really had one place for the kick, and it was all eyes on the ball that Jonathan O'Callaghan has taken so well at that line out, just heading off towards touch and off towards halfway as well to relieve that pressure. Yeah, you see Olibo substitute brought on for Kuzene, trying to attack at the front. Biritz have been very mobile, they have got men into the air. And apart from a couple of overthrows from Al Goose, I'd say in the line-out, you know, it's a battle they've been winning, but at the moment the war, which is all that matters, is going the red way. One-handed again from Harren Ordeke. Around they come on the loop. And then Bombo releases Brusque and Gobelet is after this. <laughs> Concentration there from Biritz in their play. You just feel the Biritz territorial game stepping up now. A clever round ball, but it doesn't really threaten Munster at any, any stage. And and Bruce thinks, now nah, nothing's on, so let's just probe down, line out pressure, and it's a bad ball. Stringer lost it, Hayes goes Offside. down, penalty. Offside. Offside! Which well, he, it was. He's knocked it back, he's knocked it forward, and you're offside stopping them playing it. Well, that's why Brusk was very happy to go and push that ball down for the line out. Munster so rarely beaten in the line out, but Biarritz, a spring 
It's O'Connell just has to slap back, and you see the man putting the pressure on again. Harry Nordeke, Stringer knocks it forward, and Hayes quite deliberately picks it up from an offside position, and Biritz kicked this one, and it is all on again, as we thought it would be. Hayes had no choice, it was a professional foul, and the referee might have thought about a yellow card, but it would have been a very tough call. Yeah, because I'd, I'd say that was a pretty instinctive moment. Yeah. I think he knew what he was doing, but he didn't have time to think about it. Here's Yashvili to wipe out the O'Gara penalty goal. Have we had a missed kick yet? Oh, I just waited for that one. No. Oh. Yashvili. Three more points. Even that difficult conversion for Yashvili in the first half from out wide, that much more where he'd want to place the ball, and he could not have placed it better had he just walked round through the posts and put it down behind. Three point spirits, the gap is seven again. Ogara restarts this compelling match. Oh, Harry Nordicke, that's an absolutely magnificent balletic leap there. That was superb. As it has been all afternoon, in an old Harren Ordecky has had one of his on days. Fully switched on. Great forward play for Beeritz. As are Beeritz here with this drive. Perry Long, hardly seen him break in the competition. Now he's going. Yashvili. Harren Ordecky's waiting on this side. Census Johnston normally plays to round about the 55 minute mark before he runs out of. Gas. That's Olibo. Gobele. Monster at the moment just can't get their hands on the ball. Bit of a fires off that pass. Desperate for one on ones, Bill. trying to get Gobele try. Pere Long running one against one against forwards. They're trying to build a rhythm, aren't they? The French side. And they're being quite successful in that. Aaron Ordecke, trying to build points as well, took a nasty blow there, referee is playing advantage here, Yashvili, Yashvili, O'Callaghan's got him, oh Flannery but it's back for the penalty, and Aaron Ordecke is still down, and I would suggest clean out, and Chris White will turn around and see that in a moment, one of the uh, trainers is on, he took a terrible blow there, yeah, I mean, he's just surging towards the Munster line, and does it leave me caught him really high? And then Yashvili, he's weaving spells behind. He ducks into that somewhat, he swings, I don't think that's a yellow card, I do think that's a penalty. It's not a short arm, it's just too high, and it has to be a penalty. Well, if there's anything malicious in the challenge, he's just not quite timed it right and he's slipped up towards the neck, it is, as you say, clear penalty and the uh, great news is that Harren Ordecke is uh, getting back to his feet rather gingerly, but he's hurting. Let's go down to the front line and uh, Nigel Redman has more for us. Nigel. I'll tell you what, Miles, if he does come off, they're going to miss him because not only is a thorn in the side, of Paul O'Connell, he has been absolutely terrific in the line-out for Beeritz here, taking the ball one-handed and guiding it down to uh, Cousinet. That's what annoys me, you know, about Harry Nordeke, though, because I remember him, do you remember when he burst on the scene for France, tore England to pieces, we thought we had a world star on our hands, and then he just fades out of games, but big match play, and boy, is he playing a big one today. Big match kicker, Dimitri Yashvili. Just chipping away here, Biritz. And that's exactly what that kick was, a chip from Yashvili. Delicate. Four points now between the two sides and those Biritz fans starting to believe. Right 
Biric about to make another change. Thierry Dussetois has stripped down and it's uh, Lievremont who's coming off. There's Dussetois, very talented player, just missed one French league game all season. Lievremont coming back to full fitness, he gave all that he could, but now has to go. Well, they lose a bit of shape and leadership there, but Harry Nordeke will move to eight, and then Dussetois and Betson, they have a very pacey back row. Dussetois, watch him go. Talk about straight into action. And has to field the restart. Yashvili. Gobele is not going to be able to challenge for this, it's out. Anthony Foley, that is a drop that doesn't matter. Dussetois on also gives Biarritz even more pace. And you sort of detect in the last six, seven minutes, Biarritz are trying to up the physicality, they're trying to up the pace of the game. They're trying to run Munster off their feet and take the shape away from Munster. So for Flannery, Foley and co, Munster need to start controlling the ball for a few minutes. Damien Try is hurt, and he is a big man and a big loss. Not a bad player to come on in his place. Federico Martina Ramburu, the Argentina international. Petro Balan has gone through, and there's a lot of anxiety building in this stadium. Paul O'Connell beaten at that line out and really asked in tatters at the line out. Very long. Too long. You know, monster see O'Connell as the talisman. And he's having problems here because Dusatois has come on now, spring healed. O'Connell is being opposed and he is starting to tap ball down. But the main man at the moment is playing with everything he's got, but he is not main today. Flannery, O'Callaghan. Munster just needs some ball here. Points will be useful too, of course, but they just need to hold on to it for a bit and establish some territory with it. O'Connell, Stringer, O'Gara, it's Helston on the stretch, looking to offload. So often he frees those arms, Helston, in the tackle and gets that ball away, just didn't have the support that time. Flannery. Dowling knows what he needs to do there, and that is try and clear away for this ball to come back. Referee White says Munster put it anyway. Spirits thought they'd wrapped up Jerry Flannery there. The hooker is really surging around the puck, but I do notice that he's always taking the ball, running away from support, and you don't want to do that against Spirits. He needs to come back on angles. He's making it very hard for supporters. Munster have the lead, but there's just a little bit of a blow about them at the moment. A couple of straight lines for him, Halstead, just to give him some targets. Stringer, Halston went as the decoy that time, O'Gara into midfield, Dowling takes out a piece of turf on his way, but he's still on his feet, that is strong, pugnacious work from the winger. Halston involved again, this time with the ball, but he's lost it. Knock on. Yashvili, and see there, Foley was calling for support down that short side, knowing that Yashvili might have been thinking about going when he kicked the ball away to Horgan. O'Gara again, Gobelet has got a long way to go back. That's your boy, Ronan, that's your boy. That's a lovely kick. Once the forwards will never stop tires, will never tire of seeing kicks like that. And that is what Munster needed at the moment. Territory very important again. The Beerits are going to play with pace. Munster have to have them playing from a long way away from their line. Yes, short please. Munster have in this last five minutes established that period that they were seeking to uh, threaten Beerits with a, a spell of. Concerted pressure, holding on to the ball and kicking accurately. And there is no better man than the Munster and Ireland fly half, Ronan O'Gara, at that particular kick. He's got a massive net, 25 minutes, Ronan O'Gara. He's won Triple Crowns, he's been on Lions Tours, he's been to World Cups. 
I don't know, I saw him interviewed after lunch and I get the feeling if he could steer his mates to victory here, he might just see this as the greatest moment of his career. I just get the feeling, the monster crowd now, the 16th man there trying to play their part. Soaking that up as well. It'll be like a shot of adrenaline in their hamstrings, their calves, their very lungs. August. O'Callaghan. What an important hand, and Flannery just does enough to get it off. Foley looks to strike with Barrett's backpedalling there. They didn't expect to have to take Munster at force from that line out but they've done well and they, John Kelly just tries to set them up again Ogar has dropped a long way That's back it. here good fight for the ball first of all though oh, Bill Richard fighting hard they've turned that they've done brilliantly so often Peter Stringer is the uh, Barometer. His agitation was rising there. Ahead, okay. He was getting stormy, as you could see. Okay. The ball drifting away. Now that's really good play from Donico Callahan, who's been the main man in the lineout today for his team. Plenty of time for O'Connell to rise. Wait. Wait. Yep. No, I want but you to quite right. as well. Don't face, don't face we're coming strongly into this game, and if Munster hadn't done anything else, they have at least taken some territory away from me. Taking a breath as well, you think. What Beeritz haven't done for a while in this competition is chase a game. They've been closing matches out. It's almost suiting them a little bit more, isn't it, having to go after the match? Well, they'll say that if they win it, of course. We're seeing their more complete picture. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're chasing it yet. I know what you mean, they're behind but they've got over 20 minutes to go and Yash Billy doesn't look like he can miss anything so they won't be in a hurry, they can still play territory but Munster, as the minutes go by, will think get anxious, get anxious, do something daft Stringer, O'Gara and he's going for the corner but he's missed his target that time and it will be a scrum all the way back I appreciate what you're saying, Stu, but I suppose 10 points down in Munster in a final with this atmosphere must have felt like chasing a game for Biarritz, and that's what I was driving at, their attitude, and to be able to get into all aspects of their game under incredible pressure oh, yeah. has been wonderful to behold. They haven't done the job yet, though. Yeah, far more positive. Here's Bitterbay, and then Bruce... The new man, Martina Rambaru. Oh, Payne goes down, needs to get down again, and does. Oh, launches an attack. <laughs> Almost <laughs> propelled <laughs> forward by the uh, initial yeah. half stumble. And that's a penalty for his side. Stringer is pointing to the referee, pointing out that that's happened more than once. <laughs> Guess who? Well... He's made 14 tackles and he has worked his socks off. And I tell you, Serge Betson has also given some penalties away today. The reason the ball did not come straight away was because number six did not release quickly. Number six not releasing the man quickly. Deja vu, Monsieur Betson. Oh, missed kick. Bad error, that one. String of chasers to try and make up for it. Nara looking a little bit self-conscious on the edge of that ruck. But this one has been over-egged as well. What a great 60 seconds there for the uh, two number 10s. That's the second, though, from Perry Long in this second half where he's put the ball out on the full outside of his 22. What a contrast. Ogara's kick hit like a drain. That's why it doesn't go in. Perry Long's hit like a dream. And that's why it's out on the full. It's a horrible game at times as a kick and fly half. 
You don't hit it right and you don't find touch. You hit it like a dream and you go too far. Here's Ogara. And now Halstead and Halstead saw the gap through the middle. Wallace is there. Not quite as been uh, as prominent in this second half. That's because Munster haven't had as much ball. Hall, and that was a terrific run from him. Just like Wallace. And the way that he took the ball short is Kelly. That's it! And he's played 60 times That's now it! in this competition for Munster. That's on, that's on! Hayes also in the 60s for appearances in the Heineken Cup. He goes forward. And that is scrambling across the gain line that's to it! enable Stringer to find Leamy. Got himself a little bit isolated there. Final quarter of the match now. Back in Limerick. And Ireland in general. They will be nervously watching these pictures and cheering, saying themselves. Messages being sent over the water. And brother to brother, they're cheering here as well, aren't they? This is Limerick United, and you know what? Shots like this, and sounds like this, will help Munster in the last 10, 15 when they are going to be hurting. Arms were linked there. Hearts were united. Biritz still waiting to get their noses in front. Oh, they are against the odds, aren't they? And they are playing some fine rugby. If ever there was an away game on neutral venue, this is it. Harry Nordicke rising higher than I've seen him for two seasons. This is why Biarritz are the champions of France. We're seeing them today. They're playing with pride, passion and intelligence. Goose throws just a trois. Yashvili. Kobelet. Waiting to see one of those big handoffs from Jean Baptiste Kobelet. One of the blossoming stars of this season's wait, wait, competition. Let go, let go, let go. Easy meters there, mate. Oh, but dropped. Betson lost it. Stringer got a boot it. Oh, now he's taken Bruce out. If he could have taken him down the tunnel, he would have done. If he could have picked up the brilliant pack and carried it with him, he would have done. Being to Stringer. He's having an amazing game, Stuart, isn't he, Stringer? Not just that individual score, breathtaking score in the first half, but everything else that he's done. Marcus Horan, another player coming back from injury, has gone as far as he can. But what a good replacement, Federico Pucciarello. Absolutely. Semi-final hero against Leinster. Absolutely right decision as well, because Biarritz are going to try and throw everything at the scrum to get to that man, Stringer and O'Gara. Pucciarella will scrummage for his life now. Johnston off as well. Now O'Connell wins a line out. Will that lift the team? Benoit of course, by the way, is on full census, Johnston. They can see it. Johnston could be Saracen's battle next week. Stringer to... O'Gara didn't get the distance downfield, certainly went high in the air, nearly touched the roof. Good take by Yashvili. He's a complete player, isn't he? And anyone who doesn't think he's a competitor can think again. Bit of ace kick. Now that one is exactly where he wanted it. Philippe Bidabe. Yashvili sweeping up the debris. He's taken out by Serge Betson, but nothing is going to deflect him from his mission there. He is playing like a man who feels destiny, doesn't belong in Limerick and Cork and Clare and Waterford, but it belongs in the southwest coast of France. Flannery on the money again. That's all. Wait, 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 wait. String up. O'Gara, his angle was narrowed by the Biritz 
breakaways. But you see the difference, don't you, when you get good clean line out ball, and there's been too little of that for Ronan O'Gara as Biarritz look on. They're down, but they are a mighty long way, a mighty long way from being out. I think they're just summoning themselves for one big effort. Lukaku's taking his time here. And that's why, waiting for Harren Ordeke to move forward. Perry Long might be something out wide, but it's behind Bombo. Communication wrong that time. Front line again, Nigel. Miles, it's interesting. Paul O'Connor now has changed his tactics. No moving around, he's just standing still and jumping. The result Six. is he's won the last three clean. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Good spot, Ollie. And it's very important that they keep winning these lineups. Munster can use the touchline to hang on to this Heineken Cup lead. Yeah, Flannery finding his men as well. Heavily involved in all of that, the hooker. David Wallace. Munster going to need yeah. another score. They've got a penalty. Inside their own half. Springer not as exasperated this time as the decision goes the way of his side. And once again, it's Mr. Calm, Ronan O'Gara. Are they going to need another penalty? They are the sort of team who can hang on and hang on, but against that, be it. I do believe are gathering themselves and. If I was in that street in Limerick, is it O'Connor Street? I would be thinking, drop us a goal, Roman O'P, would you? Because I would not write off Beerich coming back with a try. Plenty of time to go. Is this the moment? Is this the moment when Munster start to close out the deal? Came off O'Callaghan, then Flannery, and it squirts to Aaron Ordekin. Less of a line They needed it to be one of their best. Stay there, don't go in there, don't go in there. Don't go yet, don't go yet. Happy to time it right, just waiting until Perillon was perfectly ready, which he was, and this time well inside his 22, no problem there finding touch on the fall. Another beer it's change coming here. It's at Hooker as well. It is Benjamin Norwood. And it's Benoit Auguste who goes off. He would have been acting as skipper in the absence of Thomas Lievremont. I suspect he has really got run this show. He has to run every show, doesn't he? There he is. Referee going back for the first offence. Here's the knock on. It's been a great battle at scrum half, hasn't it? The tenacity and willpower of Stringer and the... Just the sheer dimensions to Yashvili's game, really enjoyed that battle. Stringer, one of the survivors from the two finals, along with Ogara at half-back. Oh, what a kick. It's painful, this, for Munster, oh, as kick. Payne has to go across. And all he can do is... Watching agony. Perillon's had a good second half, hasn't he? He's made the odd dart. He put one out on the full, but he's striking the ball superbly. Well, Flannery doesn't hang around there. He gets to O'Connor quickly. Beeritz caught by surprise. For once, Harry Nordicke was flat-footed, and O'Connell got up unopposed. You're quite right. And into midfield they go. Stringer. Slaps him like uh, Walter's backside to say, go on, few more metres, few more. And that's exactly what O'Gara takes, for more than a, just a few more. Ronan right O'Gara, he will not be phased by this, he's got to that stage in his career where he feels that he is ready now to be the Heineken Cup final winner.
Well, I feel there's a lot of Munster players who feel this is the moment for them to deliver. And Ronan O'Gara, two cuts, Peter Stringer, two. Paul O'Connell, of course, played in that disappointment against Leicester. So much experience. So much passion in this club. Well, I say club, this provincial team. But they are essentially a club, and that's the strength and beauty of them. And their supporters believe in them as an entity, a collective. They're not a club, they're not a province, they are a band of brothers. That is Munster, but they've only got three second-half points so far. They belong to O'Gara, they belong to Munster. As everything is shared, but they are now watching... A decision go beer its way, and Yashvili takes the tap. Maybe he was just looking for an extra ten metres. He's the kicker, of course. Straight into Donica O'Callaghan. No attempt to do anything other than get ten metres. You'll fancy his chances from here. Now, as this game has gone on and it's got tighter and tighter, the thought has crossed the mind. We've had an immaculate kicking display. Is this nail-biter going to be settled at some stage in the next 11 minutes by somebody missing a kick? And that is why, possibly, the rather nervous lurch for an extra 10 metres there from Yashvili could be revealing what's going on inside his mind. He has been the coolest of kickers thus far. So has O'Gara, as you say, it has been... An exemplary display by both. And both will know that the warmth of the welcome back home for the heroes, be they try scorers or kickers in this final, the heroes of this hour, that warmth will surpass all other previous celebrations. Yashvili, can he do it? Oh, he can. That is the measure of the man. Now Biarritz are within touching distance. I wouldn't say it's quite a storm brewing yet, but dark clouds are gathering and they're moving towards Munster's line. O'Gara needs to hang this kick high. Munster need to get this ball and they need to stay in this 22. Ten minutes to go. It is a one-point game. Anthony Foley is gone. On comes Mikko Driscoll. Listen to the roar for the captain. Standing ovation. Fresh legs needed now. Foley has been heroic again. But fresh legs now with 10 to go. In a way, it might seem like a cruel decision with 10 minutes left, but Declan Kidney felt that he had to bring on the fresh man, who is O'Driscoll, and he looks pumped up, doesn't he? Foley won't care a damn as long as his team win. That's what it's all about for Munster. Kelly... Over the beer, it's 10 metre line. David Wallace. Stringer wants this. He's going to get it. O'Gara. Wants it again. The fly half. Back with Stringer. Payne. Get around Harrod Ordick. He just was on the wrong side and trying not to play it. Here's Yashvili. Again, they cry down that section of the ground that Yashvili was in touch. Remember the Bombo score right at the start of the match. And if Biarritz do go on to win this, that try from Sorelli Bombo will be analysed, replayed, looked at forever and a day in Munster. Oh, it'll be there with the hand of back, won't it? Two minutes into the game, Munster have had a long time to go into it. And they've got the ball and they're leading and they're going forward and they're in Biarritz's half. O'Connell's run, Hayes just avoids his own man there and does well. Stringer, O'Gara, what they would do for a try now, what they would do. Halston, but the Biarritz driving out, they'll take a penalty, huh?
immense decision. But Chris White has been accurate, he's been concise. He has gone straight in the side and killed it. Number three. Number three. Well, Johnson's he's back off. on, isn't he? He's back on, yeah. He's back on because he's the specialist. Yep. For Balan, and he's gone in at the side. He has to come in from the, the back player, has to enter the uh, ruck or more. Ruck in this case. Yep, that's the right. side door, all right. No doubt at all. No doubt at all. <laughs> Chris White, a popular man. But it was the right decision from a seasoned, experienced referee. Now, with all his years of experience, O'Gara tries to draw upon that for three of the biggest, perhaps the three biggest points of his career. They have never lost the faith and they are in touching distance of the trophy. Oh, that is such an important kick from O'Gara. Biarritz were in the drive them back and get the penalty range of victory. Now, six and a half minutes, and they need two penalties or a penalty and a drop goal or the try. And now O'Connell wins the restart, and now O'Gara will want to drill this. And now Biarritz are chasing the game. Another penalty offside. O'Gara with veins standing out in his neck as he shouts the orders. Time off. But despite his clear physical presence today, what has been so impressive about O'Gara has been his control of the mind. Still a long way to go. Just look at O'Connell. I wondered if that was the ankle that's been troubling him. If it is, he's not going off. Listen to this. Can we just uh, sit back and listen exactly? You see Alan Quinlan warming, warming up there. The line-out's so important. He's a great line-out forward. He's been injured for a long time. Right now, I mean, if a, a monster line-out forward could nick a beer at throw, I think that Limerick crowd would go potty. Every piece of possession so vital. Flannery to O'Connell. And Flannery again. String. O'Gara! Lost by Horgan. Martina Ramburu now having praised the O'Gara mind. One there, one back against Scrum Down Beerix. Well, if it comes off, he's the total hero, not just Horgan but O'Gara for setting it up. But it didn't come off and it's conceded possession. No, but what's happening here? They're trying to get inside that Beerix defence. It's smart play, it's just the execution after 75 minutes, not quite right. He knows where the hole is, they've worked it out. He takes Benson out, and the pass is just too far behind Horgan. O'Connell is off. That is an ear-piercing reception for O'Connell and all that he's done, but now it's Bruce. The Beerich flag is up. This time, Dave Pearson does put his flag in the air. <laughs> oh. Beerich take a ball into touch. That's another pub drunk dry in Limerick. Get sword, get sword. Sweaty palm time for bartenders, for fans, and for most of all, this monster team. So close, but Beerich are good enough still. O'Driscoll. One of the replacements, along with Quinlan there, number 19, entrusted with the responsibility, the immense responsibility of seeing Munster through to this first Heineken Cup triumph. Keeping it tight. Keeping it going forward. It's been knocked on. And here go Biarritz. Replacement of Ramburu. It's into space. 
It's well picked up by Anthony Horgan. That is brave. But you will not expect anything else. Stringer, men to the left. Ogara goes for the boot. Some of the crowd, large section of them, wanted Ogara there to spin it. Morgan, ball seems to be going to him all the time in this final few minutes of the match. Dying minutes, but he's doing the basics well. Ogara again, now he is going for Wilf, and that is the knock-on from Halstead. Well, I tell you what, Roman Ogara is now forcing the game. He looks tired yes. to me. He looks tired to me, and he knows that that wasn't the right option there. Well, it was the right option before, wasn't it, when he did have the men and the potential overlap? Well, he had the space as well there. Betson was always arrowing in on him so hard. The 10 hunter was coming for him. And Ogara, he's made the mistake, but it just doesn't matter now for Monster. Who's making mistakes? The 14 other guys are going to rectify them because Beerich still believe they're coming. And as the clock stops, the noise doesn't. Just incredible. Yashvili puts in Harren Ordeke to Yashvili. Three points isn't enough, but a try would be. Paralong to Bidabay. These Munster players have to tackle like they never had before. Stringer's got it again. You little hero. I swear he'll win a line out if it's thrown at him at the moment. Just it, the ball is out. Olive Bay doesn't see it. Stringer just oiks it upfield anywhere, anyhow. Just keep Beeritz going backwards is Munster's motto. Beerits have too much class. These are the champions of France and they want O'Connell's men still. And they have time. Munster have been here before. They know how much it hurts. Beerits in new territory, handed from O'Driscoll. Munster fans thought it was coming back, but Olibo is there. Stand up if it's stuck in there. It's stuck in there. Your place too far. And now with Munster to defend, still they have to tackle as Boritz get the ball. Pucciarello down now, Horan will have to get himself off the bench. Agony for Boritz, and let's not forget Boritz if they lose, because listen to the crowd, this isn't Cardiff, this isn't Dublin. This is Limerick times six, and Beerit are throwing everything at them with great pride and manfully. And if Munster win this, they know they have earned it the hard way. Stuart, this is another rugby planet. Have you ever heard anything like this? In Limerick, they hope as well. here when Wales won the Grand Slam last year against Ireland. And I thought that perforated my eardrums, but this is louder still. Irish by birth, Munster by the grace of God. And they are looking heavenwards now. Terry Long, bit of bay. There is brilliance in this beer inside. It's Bruce! Try to win that ball, get back on his feet. Don't think he has, though. There it is. It's still with Beeritz and Munster now trying to send men out wide. Olibo. Slowed up. Slowed up. Not as slow as this clock, but it's slow. He was caught in the headlights there, the replacement. What about Lacos? Well, he's caught by what seems like the whole of Munster. Yes, Billy. Bombo into his own man. That will be an accidental offside and a scrum to Munster. 
One more scrum for Monster. And the Odyssey is over. One more scrum and the 11-year wait. Man of the match, Mars. It could have been Hayes. It could have been O'Callaghan. It's the try scorer. It's the heartbeat today. Peter Stringer, what a performance. The Heineken Cup, man of the match. They have counted the clock down. These players will now know. Leamy looks to Stringer. Stringy che Stringer checks with O'Gara. They know. Champions of Europe, 1978, and the All Blacks no longer stands alone. An 11-year journey in this competition finally reaches its destination. And now we can use another word, destiny. quality in the second half and then the sheer intensity and drama it wasn't to be Paul O'Connell's day the script we thought was written for him for his captain Anthony Foley those two giants and Munster weren't there at the end but Donica O'Callaghan John Hayes tackled Cam they wouldn't stop and Stringer behind them Flannery a hero throughout Quinlan back from a career threatening injury. I've seen some celebrations in my life in rugby, but few, if any, to match that. I've seen World Cup finals, Grand Slams, but I've never seen a team who cared for one another so much, who believed in one another. That was collective love almost from Munster.